Ask immigrants in this country, and many will tell you, language is a vital cultural link. It's the same in Canada's Aboriginal communities, but when it comes to young people, that link is often weak, and it's getting weaker. Take the Inuit in Nunavut. Test results released this week show the majority of young people there are illiterate in their mother tongue. But doing something about it isn't easy. Here's the CBC's Jennifer Tilden with Endangered Speech. It's been said the first sign a language is dying is when children stop using it on the playground. You know, we look like Inuit, we dress like Inuit, and what's coming out of our mouth is a foreign language. I can't understand Inuit, I can't write Inuit anymore, too. It's very hard for me. There are about 60 Aboriginal languages in Canada. All are at risk of disappearing. Inuktitut is one of Canada's healthiest Aboriginal languages, and yet, even here in Nunavut, where 85% of the population is Inuk, the language is in danger of disappearing. In a recent survey of people in Nunavut, 40% said they were losing the ability to speak in their mother tongue. Look, three banshees going at it. 19-year-old Paul Alenga is one of the casualties of this trend. I never played yet. Me too. He lives with his grandmother who raised him. She can't speak English, and he can't speak Inuktitut. There's a lot between them that's left unsaid. It's very difficult for me because I won't make sense in Inuktitut to, for, uh, to respond with my grandmother when she's speaking to me. And how do you guys communicate then? We barely communicate. It's, it's just body language, like smiling and in some Inuktitut words. Inga Alenga says almost all of her grandchildren use English more than Inuktitut. Paul can't speak his language even though it's used every day in the home where he lives. That's a sign of how pervasive the influences of the outside world have become. Even at this family wedding, signs are everywhere of how much life in Nunavut has changed in the past few generations. Josie Kusugak heads an organization that speaks for all Inuit in Canada. Inuit leaders fought hard for almost 30 years to create Nunavut to realize the dream of a new society built on Inuit culture and values, in which Inuktitut would be the working language. But with $9 million a year, culture and language has the smallest departmental budget. Nunavut's Minister of Culture and Language admits that since its creation three years ago, the Nunavut government hasn't paid much attention to the problem. I don't think it's really anyone's fault. It's just that we were too busy setting up the regular government operations to put more effort into, uh, into culture, language, elders, and youth, and 
and I've said as much since I became the minister, and, and we're doing, going to be doing a lot more on, in the area of culture and language. It's one thing to say that you're going to be doing more, but where are you going to get the money to do that? Well, I think we can do a lot by through uh, promotional programs, like putting up posters. Um, we do have the money for that. Nunavut's language commissioner says the government has to find more money if it wants to make the Nunavut dream a reality. This is our language. This is the language, Inuktitut is the language of Nunavut. 85% um, of the population of Nunavut are Inuit. About 65 to 70% of them probably speak the language. You would want to see the, the language being taught in the schools at all levels, uh, especially when our government have stated the fact that Inuktitut will be the working language. Josie Kusugalt says if the government really wants to achieve that goal, it's got to change the way it teaches Inuktitut in its schools. I think right now it's a, it's a pretentious game of uh, language preservation, the way the schools are, are, are uh, pretending to teach Inuktitut. <laughs> Parents in Nunavut can choose to have their children taught in Inuktitut, but only up to grade four. In some communities, Inuktitut extends into the higher grades, but in most places there aren't enough teachers to make that possible. And that means Nunavut children spend most of their school years learning in English. Um, when you teach a language from kindergarten to grade three or four, and mostly English beyond that, are we saying that Inuktitut language is not as important? Little minds can interpret uh, actions. They don't have to necessarily be told. Most people agree that Inuktitut has to be a priority at home as well as at school. But today, many Inuit parents are not only speaking English to their children at home, they are also making a conscious choice to have their children educated in English. Wednesday, 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 Wednesday. Parents may think if their children speak good English, they'll have more opportunities in the future. So you could say we plant, and the word plant is there, planted seeds. Try that. Okay. But research shows that children who learn in their first language do better academically. What the, our high school teachers are saying and what the community is saying and what our graduate students are saying is that they're, we're producing kids who are illiterate in both languages. One of the biggest barriers to teaching Inuit children in their own language is the lack of Inuktitut written material. In spite of its long history as an oral language, Inuktitut in Canada still lacks a consistent writing system. Very few Inuktitut books of any kind exist here, and only 38% of people in Nunavut say they are fully literate in their own language. The original writing systems for Inuktitut were created by missionaries nearly a hundred years ago. They hoped to save Inuit souls by teaching them how to read the Bible. But the various churches all had different ways of writing the language. Today there are two completely different systems being used to read and write in Inuktitut. Syllabics, a form of shorthand, is used by most Inuit in Canada, but not all. Another system based on the English alphabet is also used in some parts of Canada and most of the circumpolar world. Kusugak believes making Inuktitut a strong written language is key to its survival, and that means choosing one way of writing it down. After all, it is one language. So the, the, the whole idea of uh, preserving uh, languages, for example, might 
have a lot to do with uh, developing a standard writing system so that we can develop better curriculum uh, for students in school, for example. Fortunately for Inuit in Canada, there are others like them that they can look to for guidance. These kids look just like the kids in Nunavut. They share the same language and culture. But these Inuit are from Greenland, and their experience proves that standardization can make a difference. 55,000 people live in Greenland. 80% of them are Inuit. Although there are slight differences, Greenlandic and Inuktitut are the same language. The real difference lies in the fact that where Inuktitut is struggling to survive, Greenlandic is thriving. Johan Hansen is 15 years old. He can speak, read and write in Danish and English. But the language he uses the most is his first language, Greenlandic. Not being able to speak your own language is almost unheard of here. If, if you didn't speak Greenlandic here in living in Nuuk, how would you be treated by other young people? Yeah, they will say I'm not, I'm not from Greenland. They will say go home where you come from. Yeah. Like this. Right. His family is like many others here. Greenlandic society is very modern, yet as the family sits down to seal meat for dinner, the conversation is in the language of their ancestors. No. If you don't take compromises and uh, make uh, a decision, uh, then uh, the time will pass and uh, you end up uh, losing your language. Akalak Lunga is a well-known Greenlandic politician. Good. His daughters have been raised surrounded by their culture and language. But Lunga says 20 years ago, Greenlanders were facing the same situation that Inuit in Canada are today. We were losing everything, so we had to fight. And in Greenland, we did not. We had already lost uh, uh, throat singing. We had uh, already uh, lost uh, uh, dancing by, by drum. We had already lost our kayaks. So what we, we did, we do, when we were young, in the 70s, we fought for all of those. Now the uh, drum dancing is back, the kayak is back, and uh, the uh, language uh, is, uh, is developing. This year we are printing a new book of Hans Christian Andersen, and uh, we will also publish Shakespeare stories. Uh, in our in, in, in Greenlandic this year. The Atuakjovik publishing house has been producing Greenlandic literature since 1956. They publish up to 35 books a year, including educational materials, novels, children's books, and original Greenlandic literature. Uh, there was a revival of the use of the Greenlandic language and printing in, in, in Greenlandic back in the 50s and 60s because the Danish government questioned uh, the, our language. They were saying, why don't you just skip the Greenlandic in order for you to develop, in order for you to progress in your history, you need to do another language.
which means Danish. And that really made the Greenlandic people very mad. Greenland was colonized 300 years before Canada's Arctic. That's one reason for their extensive literary history. The first Greenlandic newspaper was published here in Nuuk in 1861. A hundred years later, 98% of Greenlanders could read and write in their own language. Greenland's original writing system was developed by a Lutheran missionary in the early 1800s. So although the church taught Greenlandic children in Danish, it also taught them how to read and write in their own language. Unlike Inuit in Canada, that were sent to residential schools where even speaking Inuktitut was forbidden. What they did was to adapt the, to, to the culture and language of, uh, of Greenland and then from that uh, uh, built on uh, uh, this uh, country's own language. And uh, the mission, on the other hand, uh, uh, took away some of our soul, but uh, also kept, kept the language, uh, so I think uh, that's uh, an important thing. For these young Greenlanders, being able to speak their own language is normal. They're surrounded by it. Yeah. Music stores have whole sections devoted to Greenlandic musicians. It's the language used in the media, at the grocery store, on the playground, and it's the language of Greenland's home row government. The first action taken by the Home Rule government after it was established in 1979 was to make a new law for schools. It said the language of instruction in all schools would be changed from Danish to Greenlandic. Greenlanders were able to achieve this by standardizing their writing system. As a result, these children only have to learn one alphabet. The same letters are used to write in Greenlandic, Danish, and English. It also helps that Greenland has created a common dialect that is used as the country's working language. Greenlanders speak different dialects depending on where they're from, but all official publications, curriculum, and lessons are delivered in the official dialect of West Greenlandic. It's uh, important for ourselves as uh, individual, and uh, it's also important for our dignity. Akkaluk Lunga says standardization and strong government support has kept his language alive. And uh, I think it's important for Greenland, at least, uh, to say that uh, we don't want to lose our language. That's the last part of our culture. Today, as young Greenlanders gather to mark International Youth Day, they are confident of their identity and secure in their culture, thanks to the foresight of previous generations. In Canada, Inuit have not yet achieved such a comfortable balance. Modern ways have already taken root. There's no way to turn back time. But for Josie Kusugak, moving into the future doesn't mean you have to leave your language and culture behind. It is not uh, that Canada is behind Greenland, it is just a different time in history. Uh, uh, we have an opportunity to learn from them to actually take the best of what they went through and 
do with it what we can in, in Canada. But people here aren't very enthusiastic about a standardized system like Greenland. They're used to the writing systems they have and don't want to change. They also fear they'll lose regional dialects that make the language so unique. Much of the resistance comes from elders. They're the most respected and obeyed members of Inuit society. To go against the elders' wishes is almost unheard of. I think there's a real element of truth uh, that the elders will pick the emotional side of language and, in, and uh, uh, writing systems in the traditional sense and not think about the modern usage that we have to use in developing curriculum uh, and uh, uh, teaching our uh, young people a standard writing system. Nunavut's minister in charge of language preservation wants Inuit students to be taught in their own language right up to grade 12 as soon as possible. But he doesn't believe standardization is necessary to achieve that goal. I think we can promote Inuit Institute as one language with different dialects, as one language with two different writing systems, but I don't think it would be very hard to uh, move forward even if we don't necessarily have a uniform writing system or uniform language. Without uh, thinking of uh, how we can standardize uh, dialects and uh, the writing systems, uh, it would be like, uh, well, let's learn English and French the best way we can, because we know those are going to survive. It only takes one generation of young Inuit like Paul Alanga for the language to be lost. He says it's too late for him. At 19, he probably won't ever learn his language. He'll never have a conversation with his grandmother. He'll never hear her stories. For Paul, that's a great loss. Some people might say, Inuktitut's not that important. Why not just let it go? What do you think about that? That. That's that's not what I look for in an Inuk. It, Inuk is our people. It's tradition. It's life, and you don't have to lose it. It's supposed to be there forever. In Ikaruit, I'm Jennifer Kelder.